Diego and Luis are um, with the East Project, and they're the ones that decided to bring this project to your school. So um, we're real grateful and, and excited to have Harbor High with us, and we're real grateful to, um, to Diego and Luis for taking this on. And what they're talking about is we are here to beg y'all to bring us all the used shoes that you can come up with. And I was talking to a young man in um, the office, and I asked him had he brought his shoes, and he said, no, I don't have 10 pairs of shoes. Well, 10 pairs of shoes is the ideal number of shoes. But even if just one student, even if each student just brought one pair of shoes, that would still be 1,600 pairs of shoes. So we would love for y'all to bring, you know, 10 pairs of shoes each. That would be 16,000 pairs of shoes. But we need all the shoes we can get. If you only can come up with two or three pairs of shoes, please bring those because all of them add up and help us. Now, if you do actually, if you are able to come up with 10 pairs of shoes, it doesn't have to be your shoes. You can bring, you know, your used shoes. You can ask your brother or your sister, your mom or your dad. You can even get some from your neighbor. Um, but you can, you can get used, from, used shoes from various places. And if you do come up with 10 pair, we like to give you something to signify and show that um, you did something. You know, there's a lot of people that that think about helping people, and they talk about helping people, and then they think about helping people and talk about helping people, and then they think about helping people and talk about helping people, but they don't ever actually end up doing anything. Good people, you know, really have it in their heart. They want to help people, but they still don't ever actually take any action. And when you go home and find 10 pairs of shoes, you've taken an action. You've actually done something. So at that point, you have graduated from one of those people that just thinks about it and talks about it to someone that actually did something. And so we like to give people a memento for that. And this is what we came up with that we think that high schoolers will like. And so far, they really have liked it. And we got this from a well that we dug um, in a Maasai village. The villagers there make these bracelets by hand. And we brought these back from Kenya. And so if you bring in 10 pairs of shoes, you get this um, wonderful, fabulous Maasai bracelet, okay? Tons so, of different colors, too. Yeah, all different colors. This is one of the brighter colors. That's why I'm showing you this one. <laughs> and the reason that we, um, why do you think we want used shoes? I mean, how can we, what can we do with used shoes to provide water for people? I mean, that's, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Y'all are allowed to see. Uh, all right. It didn't make sense in our classroom. I've had that question asked. Very good. Thank you. Yes, it doesn't make any sense. Well, we learned about this from a man, and um, his name is Shuman George, and he's, he's in St. Louis, and he's been doing this for about five years, and he's the one that figured out how, how to do this. And what we do is we collect shoes, lots of shoes. We need lots of shoes, and we export them to different countries. If you think about it in environmental science, Think about the fact that we collected 87,000 pounds of shoes this year. So that means there's 87,000 pounds of shoes that are not in our landfills. All right? What do you think Goodwill does with the shoes if they don't sell them? They throw them away. So that's 87,000 pounds of shoes that are not in our landfills, but actually in another country on people's feet being reused again. So there's a, a term for that, I think it's called free cycling or upcycling, something like that. So it's using something that you already have and making it useful again. There's no remanufacturing, no pollution involved. Um, so it's, it's environmentally friendly. Okay, so uh, this picture in particular, I think this picture really brings home the difference between the way many people in other countries live and the way that we live here. We tend to think that we are poor when we don't have the cutest jacket at the school, or we don't drive, or we drive an ugly car. We think we're poor, but that is not true, is it? I think this signifies. I think this is a very good example of global poverty. When we get up and put our shoes in the morning, we're trying to match them to our outfit to be cute. We don't think about the the aspect relating to shoes, in that they actually protect our feet from the environment. We have numerous shoes, and um, and they don't, obviously. So here he is. He's made a protection for his feet out of water bottles. So I think that's a 
pretty graphic description. Difference. I think it shows the difference between how we live and the way that a lot of other people in other countries live. All right. Now, this is Thomas. This. So we take the shoes and we're going to help people get water. All right. So the first thing I'm going to talk about with y'all is a need for water. That's another thing that we tend to take for granted here in the U.S. is clean water. We just get up and turn on our faucets and we've got clean water. Well, this is Thomas. He lives in Kenya. We took this picture not this year, but last year when we were there digging wells. And he is in a riverbed. And I like to ask students to notice, do you see any water in that riverbed? No, there's no water in the riverbed. And that's the problem. Most of their water is going to come from lakes or streams. And lakes or streams can dry up periodically. Not a big deal here if a lake or a stream dries up. Have y'all seen a lake or a stream dried up somewhere around here and then it rains and then it's full again and it's fine? But when you depend on that to live, that's a big problem. Now, does anyone know about how long you can go without water before you start to dehydrate? Two or three days. And if you, if you really get dehydrated, what's the end result? Shout it out, guys. Death, you can die. Okay, so it's a big, big problem. Now let's look at the next, uh, next picture. All right, so she has water. All right, so she's gotten that water from a lake or a stream. Now, what could be the problem with that water? Dirty. Dirty, thank you. Now, dirty, dirt doesn't necessarily kill you, does it? You can drink murky, dirty water and it won't kill you, right? Let's look at the picture of her water. This is the water that's in her bucket. Okay, so that's what she's going to drink. Would y'all want to drink that? No. It's murky, it's dirty, but it's not necessarily dangerous. All right, let's look at where she collected this water. Does that make y'all thirsty? What, does anyone have a problem with that? Would that concern anybody drinking that water? Why would that concern you? Come on, guys. Huh? Say that out loud. I heard you. Go ahead, say it out loud. There's a cow in it. There's a cow in it. Thank you. There's a cow in it. And why is that a problem? Or why is a cow being? Okay. It's nasty. It's nasty and it's dirty. And I wouldn't want to drink it. But they're going to. Why? Why are they willing to drink that water? Because that, exactly, that's all they have because they don't have a choice. Now, what makes water dangerous is the fact that many parasites, bacteria, and diseases are waterborne. That means that they live in water. So if they drink water that is dangerous, what can happen? Get sick and die. Okay, so if they don't have water, they can get sick and die. All right? But if they drink the wrong water, they can get sick and die. Okay, so the, ch the real problem is the fact that you can't actually see bacteria. Has anyone here actually seen bacteria with their, just their eyes? Or cholera, or a parasite? You can't see it with your eyes. If they could see it, they wouldn't drink it, right? But you can't see it, so every time, now think about this, Every time they drink water, they're taking a chance. Every single time. Think about that today. Every time you take a drink of something, try to um, put yourself in that, their place and realize that every time you take a drink of something, you might die from that, from that drink. It might be contaminated. And it says right here, in the world's poorest country, over 5,000 children die each day. And 90% of those deaths are, are to poor water. All right, so it's not like occasionally they die. They die a lot from drinking bad water. So we learned about a way that we can take something that people already have that they no longer want. That's what we're trying to push home here is we want y'all just to, that's all we want. We can help people get clean water if you will bring us something that you already have that you no longer want. All you have to do is take the steps to gather them up and bring them up here to school. And we can take them from there and actually help people. Now, how do we help people with shoes? 
Let, let's talk about the kind of shoes we take next. Go, go straight through to the pile of shoes. Okay, so this was from an elementary school and they had about 300 students and each student brought us 10 pairs of shoes. So this is about 3,300 pairs of shoes, all right? In this picture, you can see that we take all kinds of shoes. We want tennis shoes, flip flops, dress shoes, high heels, rain boots, um, house shoes, Crocs, all kinds of shoes, all right? So that can get your numbers up, right? If you don't have to just bring a certain type of shoe. And let's see, we need to keep the shoes together. So if you will, you can put three or four pairs of shoes in a bag, like a Walmart bag, and tie it in a knot. That'll keep them together. We have to keep the shoes together because we're gonna ship these to other countries, okay? Got that? Keep them together, put them in there. Okay, they need to be wearable shoes. They're actually gonna go from here to another country and be on people's feet. So we don't need shoes that your, your dog is chewed up, okay? Don't bring us shoes where the soles are falling off. They need to be a wearable shoe. Definitely used, even well used. They can be scuffed, they can be dirty, they can be all kinds of things, but they need to be structurally wearable. Got it? All right. So we need mountains of shoes and y'all have lots of students. So we want a huge pile of shoes from Harbor High, and we're trying to get that message out. That's what Diego and Luis and all of us are here trying to do, is get this message out to get people to bring us a lot of shoes. When we get a whole bunch of shoes, we export them, and we are paid by the pound. Do you think we get a lot per pound for used, stinky, dirty shoes? We do not. That's why we need so many. One pair of shoes, let's say one pair of shoes weighs a pound. Let's say we, and it, and it fluctuates, but let's just say we get 35 cents a pound. 35 cents isn't very much money, but if we get 100,000 pounds of shoes, y'all are in high school, y'all can do the math. Can you? 100,000 pounds of shoes, 35 cents a pound, $35,000. With $35,000, we can buy well digging equipment. All right, and we actually go to Kenya and dig wells in different villages and communities. We have, this is Joy, she is our point of contact there in Nairobi, Kenya, and she actually determines which community, she kind of vets them, you know, she goes through uh, who they are and whether or not they are able to take ownership of the well and make sure that everything, you know, is gonna work for them. But we, she chooses the communities that are gonna get the wells and then we actually go there and dig wells with the welding equipment. Now, here's Mr. Allen. There's Mr. Allen. He just got back from a well digging trip in um, Kenya in January. All right, he actually goes there and digs the wells. We only dug one well this January. Most of our wells are about 150 feet deep, but this particular well, it was in the Maasai village that we were talking about, was a very difficult well and it had to be 600 feet. And that was a very, very difficult well to drill and we only got one of them done. But we did put in a lot of water purification systems. So we purchase, with the money that we get from the shoes, welding equipment and water purification systems, okay? In Kenya, the need is mainly wells. We do put in water purification systems, but mainly it's wells. They have a lot of groundwater that we can get to. We just have to dig down there to help them get it and bring it up. They have water. The problem in Haiti is contaminated water. Who here has heard about the earthquake in Haiti and the cholera epidemic? So obviously, they can't even drink water out of their tap. They have to purify even water that comes from their city. All right, so let's look at what it looks like when you hit a well. This is the Luala Community Center. This was from last year. We don't have our pictures all in from this well digging trip, but this is the Lavala Community Center and this is what it looks like when you hit a well and everybody rejoices when you hit a well. It's a very, very big deal when you hit a well. And then this next picture is a water purification system. This also went in in Kenya. It's just a picture to show y'all what it looks like, but this is what we do mainly in Haiti. And you put in a big tank like that, fill it up, this is a water purification system and it hooks up to that and purifies the water at 55 gallons a minute and it's solar powered because most of these places don't have access to electricity so it's a solar powered um, water purification system. The only thing that they have to replace on this is every couple of months they have to put in a handful of salt 
just regular old table salt. And I don't understand the chemical process, but it does something and it, and it turns the, the sodium into sodium chloride into sodium into, I forget, bleach, basically. Sodium, I don't know. Anyway, it does something, but I don't understand it. But we know how to hook it up and put it on there. So we buy these. They just dropped the price on those to $750 each. So we can put more. So that's about half of what they were charging. So, all right, next picture. And then this is the end product. This is what your shoes do. So if we can get y'all to bring us lots and lots of shoes, this is what happens. Clean water comes out of faucets for people that have never had access to clean water. I think that's pretty amazing that we can take something like used old shoes and do something like that. Don't y'all think so? Okay, I think we deserve a hand for that. Would y'all please clap? And then this young lady, I like this picture. I just love the, the look on her face. Um, they're so grateful for water. We don't really, we don't really, really appreciate water here. We don't think a thing about it, do we? And for them, it's so important. I, I like to explain to high schoolers, this is my little analogy that I've come up with, but if, if you see back behind her, they've got their buckets there. We've just gotten the well started. They've got their buckets there and they're trying to collect the water. Why would they do that? Why would they want to collect it? They don't want to spill it. They don't like the idea that it's spilling on the ground. Because it's like really rare because they don't have it's, a lot of access to it. Exactly. It's precious and it's rare. So they very much, they value it. And I like for y'all, to, to put it to y'all, if you think about what if someone came to your house and dug a hole in your backyard and it started spitting out dollar bills? Or ten dollar bills. What would you do? Would you just let them spit out and lay on the ground? No, you'd be collecting those things up, wouldn't you? What if? And, but what if someone? How long would you collect them? Pretty much as long as it's coming out of there. But what if someone came out and said, "No, no, 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 you don't understand. Those dollar bills are going to keep coming out of that hole. They're going to keep spitting out. You don't have to collect them. You don't have to worry about them. You, you have all the dollar bills you ever want." How long would you believe, I mean, how long would it take you to grasp that? I mean, you'd stay out there for two or three days collecting those dollar bills just in case it stopped, right? So that's, that's kind of their mentality. They can't wrap their head around the idea that water's going to keep coming out of that hole. All right, last picture to Thomas. So this is where I really challenge y'all and ask y'all to think about it. You know, go home get some shoes and bring them up here. That's really all we're asking. We're not asking you to spend any money. We don't want you to buy any shoes. We just want you to bring shoes you already have, but also bring shoes that your mom already has that she doesn't want. You can get a lot of shoes from your mom. Also bring shoes that your dad has that he no longer wants. You know, try to get several different people's shoes and you can come up with 10 pairs of shoes. I promise you, you can. It's not that hard. And when you bring them up here, then we can use that those shoes to fund well digging projects and um, water purification for people that don't have water. Any questions? Yes, sir. Do you guys, do you guys like teach them how to maintenance it or do you have to go back every time? Nope. We do teach them. There's usually one person in each village that is in charge of all of that. And um, we have a, my husband has a real interesting story, which I'm going to tell because he's back there. But. Uh, you're the only husband I got. <laughs> which oh, which story? <laughs> um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm a little embarrassed now. Okay, um, um, there was in, in Haiti they put in place this water purification system, and so he's trying to figure out, you know, the right person in the village to. It's actually an orphanage, and he's like, you know, we need someone to come, you know, so we can teach about this water purification system. And so they say, okay, we'll be back with someone. So they go off on their little motorcycle and they come back with this eight-year-old boy. And they bring back, it's an eight-year-old boy, and they say, he's the smartest person in the whole village. And the whole time, he's standing there, and our son is also was on the team that went to Haiti. And um, our son is standing there explaining to him, you know, okay, this is how this works, this is how this works, you put this here, blah, 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 blah. And that little eight-year-old boy just stood there and watched it, and he was like, yeah, I got it. And, and he sure did. He had it. You know, they, he was a, an amazing little boy. But that's a really good question. Usually there's a tribal uh, elder 
or someone in that community that's kind of the head of the community and they are the ones that's in charge of um, making sure that the well is used properly and all that. It's a good question. Any other questions? Yes, sir. We have contacted Goodwill on several occasions. We've asked them for their shoes and we've not gotten any response. Uh, we can't do anything if people don't respond. So, you know, we're kind of at a loss whenever at that point. That's a, that's a very good question. If you can convince them, we, we would love to have all the shoes that they're throwing away. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. How did you get involved in this project? Well, Okay, we were living, we lived overseas about 20 years ago. We lived in Saudi Arabia. And my husband worked for the airlines there, and that, because he worked for the airlines, we got free airline tickets all over the world. And uh, one of the places I wanted to go was to Kenya and to Zimbabwe, just because I love animals. And ever since that trip, he's had it in his head that he is going to go back and do something. And, and we didn't know it would be with water. But I knew if he says he's going to do something, he will do it. And... Um, and he was still, you know, I, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do something. For 20 years, he's told me that. And he saw Shoeman George on a Cardinals baseball game. And uh, Shoeman George was talking about collecting shoes and taking water. And we called George, and now we're all, you know, we're all big friends and working together. We work with George. He's also in that picture with us. So when we go over there, we throw in with George. It's more effective financially for all of us to work together than for each of us to try to work separately. So... So it's because of Schumann George and because of our trip 20 years ago. Well, that's it. Thank you for asking that, though. Any other questions? Anyone? Um, another thing I wanted to add is you're not helping. Like, um, It's more than just giving people shoes and giving people fresh and clean water. You're actually giving them like other things like education. Like that girl that was carrying the bucket on her head, she would spend eight you know, eight hours a day going to find rivers and going to find streams to collect water from and everything. And she could use that to go get education, to go learn other things that would help her later on in life. So you can see how your just one pair of shoes can help out a lot for a village or a person or a community. It can actually really change someone's lives more than you believe. Yeah, that's exactly true. It, does, it helps girls go uh, have time to go to school. The other thing is, if you think about it, you've got these old used shoes that you're not wearing anymore. You donate them, we go dig a well, right? Well, they have water not just for one day, not just for one year, but even their, their children will have water. So even after we're all dead and gone, a well can last theoretically forever. So even after every one of us is dead and gone, there can still be people taking water out of that well will still be people that are being helped. So you can actually help people even after you're dead and gone just by donating your shoes. I think that's pretty amazing. I, I love that. It's kind of a legacy to it. But. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Ms. Lamb. How many states or how, how broad is this? Well, we are doing this in Arkansas right now. Schumann George does it in St. Louis. And he does some of his surrounding states as well. I know he has people sending him shoes from all over the place, uh, Washington, all over the place. He gets a lot more shoes than we do. Um, but we're just starting out. We've only been doing this a year, so we're just doing this mainly in Arkansas. Y'all are our farthest away people to, um, to, do, to collect shoes for. Most of our stuff has been right in the central Arkansas area. But we, we're going to do Memphis pretty soon. So the Memphis Fire Department is going to do a shoe drive for us. So. so a lot of different states, but it's not like nationwide. And our fire departments are doing it too. Oh, yes. Like you, you said that you've gotten shoes from um, schools and stuff. Like what other organizations like help out with this? We yeah, we get a lot. We get shoes from uh, churches. We get quite a. Most of our shoes come from schools. Most of our shoes come from schools. But we also get shoes from churches and businesses and business drop-offs. Sometimes businesses will volunteer to be a drop-off and then individuals will just drop their shoes off there. And like Diego just brought up, the fire department here in Springdale is also participating in the shoe drive. So they'll be collecting shoes as well. So we need to get the word out just to the general public that they can drop shoes off at the fire departments. 
Um, and we get shoes just from individuals. Sometimes we just have people call us up and say, I have 600 pairs of shoes to donate to you. Come get them. And we go get them. Um, is that everything? Mm -hmm. Do you know the last day that you'll be collecting shoes and how the process will go about to, uh, to get these gathered? Because I know it's, it's not easy to fill some. Um, you mean just from Harbor High? Yes, for all around. I don't know how this is going to work. Well, we've got shoes in Springdale that we've got stu schools in Springdale that aren't going to start their shoe drives until like right at the end of the school year. So we'll be up here throughout the rest of the year off and on, you know, starting shoe drives and picking up shoes. But y'all's shoe drive, I'm not sure how long y'all have it lasting, but we're trying to get 10,000 pairs of shoes from this school and 10,000 pairs of shoes from the Springdale High School. That's a truckload. That's a shipment. We have to have 20,000 pounds to fill up a truck to send out. Um, so it would be nice if we could get 20,000 pounds. I think we have about 2,000 pounds here already, but we've collected shoes from Bayari Elementary, from Parson Hills Elementary, and from Sonora Elementary so far. So they finished their shoe drives, and we've brought those shoes here. But we want your school to come up with 10,000 pairs of shoes. What do y'all think? Y'all think y'all can help us do that? Do you really think you can? Do y'all care? Will you guys spread the word? <laughs> yeah, and uh, Ms. Doji had a good idea. I don't, I'm don't. i not a tweet person. Don't know anything about tweeting, twittering, what the <laughs> word is. But um, she had a good idea that if y'all could like, is it, is it called tweeting or twittering? I don't know. But if y'all could do that and tell people to bring shoes, that would be awesome because it would start to get out there. Do you see what I'm saying? Anything we can do to get the word out to everyone else because it would be great if every single person in this room brought us 10 pairs of shoes But how many people are in here? Maybe 45? That's 450 pairs of shoes What if we could get a bunch of people to bring us a bunch of shoes? That's our goal here. So anything y'all can do to help us get the word out Does anyone have any other ideas that might help? Oh, you just thought we wanted just shoes. Like, bring shoes. We thought it was like, what? bring shoes, get water. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I okay, well now y'all know. Clarification. Okay. Maybe like in the rotunda where your sign is. That's a good idea. Just like have like a little process, like bringing shoes and then like a little arrow and then it's like they sell for money and then that. That's a good that's idea. A good idea. If people are confused, and that's the reason we're here is trying to get all of that information out because it is confusing. It does sound pretty, um, you know, it's hard to collect used old shoes to, to clean water. It's very difficult to do. But once you get it, it's like, oh, well, it makes perfect sense. But, it, you know, you have to explain it to people and get people to understand it. But they're filming this. There should be a thing that goes out on the Harbor High News today. And the news station, Channel 5, was out last week, and I'm hoping that they're going to show that. So that will help as well. So, but I sure do thank you all for coming in and listening. And, and I know one class has already heard all of this once. So um, I thank you all for being patient and listening to it again. Okay.